The Almighty God states in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَمَنْ قُتِلَ مَظْلُومًا فَقَدْ جَعَلْنَا لِوَلِيِّهِ سُلْطَانًا فَلَا يُسْرِفْ فِي الْقَتْلِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ مَنْصُورًا The one who is killed unjustly, then we have given his heirs or his guardians power, authority to seek retribution. Therefore, let him not slay others excessively, for he is supported. Sadaq Allahul Aliyul Azim. My respected brothers and sisters, illuminate your hearts and minds with a very loud salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. As we begin our exploration into the first general ziyara of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, we are introduced to the concept of revenge, divine revenge. Revenge is a very powerful driving force in our lives. Sometimes you have wars sparked because of revenge. Sometimes entire communities are ruined because of vengeance and revenge. Sometimes families are ruined, relationships are ruined because of revenge. It's a driving, it's a powerful driving force in our lives. We all know that feeling. When you feel as if you have been oppressed, you feel you've been wronged. You feel others have committed an act of injustice against you. That feeling of revenge, we've all experienced it. It's powerful. The energy that it generates in you. It's as if sometimes you feel like destroying the whole world because of this feeling of revenge and vengeance that you get. Now the greatest act of injustice that occurred in the history of humanity was the killing of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. His blood was spilled unjustly. This was the greatest act of injustice, the greatest act of oppression that was done in the history of humankind. What we see in the opening passage of this first general ziyarah of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. In Mafatih al Jinan, as we explained last night, there are several, about seven general visitations to the Imam. In these nights, we are exploring the first ziyarah to uncover its meanings, to delve into the depths of this amazing ziyarah that has been passed down to us by Al Imam al Sadiq, peace be upon him. In the first passage, opening passage of this ziyara, we are introduced to a common theme that not only do you find in this ziyara, but in other ziyaras of Al Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. And this theme is the idea of vengeance. That the death of Al Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam will be avenged. The Divine vengeance from those who killed Al Imam Al Hussein salam unjustly. Now there are several questions here that are worth analyzing. Number one, who is the one who will seek the vengeance from the killers of Al Imam Al Hussein? Number two, how will revenge be sought for the death of Al Imam Al Hussein? Through which means and from who? Because we know. Obviously, that the killers of Al Imam Al Hussein salam, perished 13 centuries ago. So, if anyone is going to seek revenge from the killers of Al Imam Al Hussein, how is that possible when they have died 1,300 years ago? And finally, we will examine the difference between divine revenge, or let's call it social revenge as well and personal revenge. What is the difference between these two? And how is it necessary for us as human beings to protect ourselves from personal revenge? In the opening passage of the ziyara, before the idea of vengeance is mentioned, 
we see two introductory phrases. The ziyarah of an Imam al Hussein salam starts by this phrase Assalamu alayka ya hujjat Allah wa ibn Peace be upon you, O proof of God and the son of his proof. The highest status that the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, carried was that they were the proofs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this earth. Through them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing the humanity. Allah created us for what purpose? Isn't it to test us? Allah is testing us through the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, because in order for you to have a valid test, you need the proofs, right? When you go to school or college and you're given an exam, doesn't the professor give you the proof before that? Either in his lectures or in the books or in the extra readings, the proof has to be somewhere. If you go to a class and there's no way for you to find the answer and the proof, then that's not a fair test. A fair test is one in which you're given the opportunity to search for the truth. Allah has created us human beings to try us and test us. And He has sent the proofs and the signs with the prophets and the successors to the prophets. So Imam al Hussein salam is the proof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because through Him Allah sends the proofs to humanity. This is the highest position that he carried as an Imam and all the Prophets of God. Now those who killed Al-Imam al Hussein salam, they actually transgressed against the proof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has created you to test you and He sent you the proofs. Is there a crime greater and worse then messing with the very proof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then killing the very proof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this introductory phrase demonstrates to us the magnitude of this crime. Because it's preparing us for the vengeance. When you have a huge crime that's committed, then people expect vengeance. Justice necessitates that there is an act of revenge taken from the perpetrators. The following statement says, "Assalamu alayka ya qatil Allah wa ibn qatil. Peace be upon you, O qatil of Allah and the son of his qatil. You know when someone from your family members, let's say, God forbid your father, your brother is killed, in the Arabic language this person is described as being a qatil. When you lose someone, someone is unjustly killed, that is your qatil because he's been killed and he belongs to you. He belongs to your family or he belongs to your tribe. This phrase describes the Imam السلام, as being the qatil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he belongs to Allah. And if you belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will take it upon himself to seek the vengeance from your killers. Because when someone is killed from your family, isn't it your obligation to seek vengeance, to seek retribution from the one who unjustly killed, let's say, your father or brother? That is your obligation as a family member. You need to defend the one who was killed from your family. And Imam al Hussein belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, he has taken it upon himself to seek the vengeance from the killers of Imam al Hussein. And this is a lesson for us. If you die in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's as if you symbolically become a part of God's family. And He takes it upon Himself to defend you and to seek revenge from those who killed you. Assalamu alayka ya qatil Allah wa ibn qatilah. So Imam al Hussein alayhi salam is the qatil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will take it upon himself to seek vengeance from those who killed him. Then we are introduced to the idea of vengeance. Assalamu alayka ya thar Allah wa ibn thar. Peace be upon you, O vengeance of God and the son of his vengeance. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in the Holy Quran that whoever is unjustly killed, وَمَنْ قُتْلَ مَظْلُومًا فَقَدْ جَعَلْنَا لِوَلِيهِ سُلْطَانًا We have given his heirs, let's say a father is killed, Allah has given authority and power to his children, to his sons for example, to seek retribution. فَقَدْ جَعَلْنَا لِوَلِيهِ سُلْطَانًا فَلَا يُسْرِفْ فِي الْقَتْلِ إنه كان منصورة. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this right. If someone unjustly, willingly, knowingly kills one of your family members, you have a right to go to the judge and ask the judge for this person to be punished. For the death sentence to be passed on to this murderer because he knowingly and deliberately committed an act of murder and justice must be served. Now when it comes to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, who is the one who, see, who will seek his vengeance? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ziyara says, As-salamu alayka ya thar Allah, you're the vengeance of God. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will seek the vengeance. Now why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Number one, he died in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of that. Number two, the blood of an Imam al Hussein salam is so valuable, is so sacred, only God can seek the vengeance for it. Only God can do justice to it. Because we cannot come close to grasp the greatness of an Imam al Hussein's blood, the sanctity and the value of his blood. Only Allah can grasp that. And number three, so many groups were involved in the killing of Al Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. So many factors were at play. Only God can do justice to them. We can't. Some say, well, Al Mukhtar killed many of the killers of Al Imam Al Hussein. Didn't he seek revenge? No. Only Allah knows how many people were involved throughout history that caused the bloodshed in Karbala. And besides, Al Mukhtar couldn't you know, seek revenge from all the killers of Imam al Hussein. He tried to seek revenge from some of them, but not all of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who's capable of seeking this revenge. No one else in history can do that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who knows exactly what happened, who was responsible for what, and how to seek the revenge. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will seek the revenge from the killers of an Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, and he will avenge his blood. This also applies to all the Imams of Ahlul Bayt. In one of the supplications that we recite in honoring Lady Fatima al Zahra, salamullahi alayha, it says, Allahumma kun at Talib laha mimman zalamaha wa stakhaffa bi haqqiha. Oh Allah, you be the one who will seek revenge from those who oppressed Fatima and those who took her right lightly, lightly. They denied her right. And then it says, Wa kuni Allahumma thaira bi dami awladiha. Oh Allah, you be the one who will avenge the blood of the Imams from her progeny. Now when we speak about divine revenge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking revenge, what does it mean for God to seek revenge? One of the names of Allah is Al-Muntaqim in Arabic, the avenger, the one who seeks vengeance. As we know vengeance, is, it starts with a feeling. We've all experienced that feeling, right? It's this feeling where you want to harm someone because that person harmed you. It's this powerful feeling that we experience. It's this hatred that we have towards someone whom we think oppressed us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above feelings. Allah does not experience these feelings that you and I do. So what does it mean for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to seek vengeance? Besides, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't have any personal feelings with anyone. With us human beings, it gets personal. I have this personal hatred vendetta against someone and I want to seek vengeance but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above personal vengeance so when we have the holy Quran speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking revenge in many parts of the Quran Allah speaks about revenge what does that mean 
In Quranic literature, vengeance means the establishing of God's justice. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes justice, that is one way of us understanding His revenge. Let me give you an example. You have a criminal in society who commits a crime. He commits an act of homicide, an act of murder. Now what does our law do? Our law enforcement agencies, they take this criminal and they imprison this criminal. He is sentenced to a life you know, sentence in prison, to a life term in prison. Now when this criminal is sentenced to a prison, to a sentence, a life sentence, this in itself is a type of social vengeance. We can say that our society has sought revenge from this criminal and he's being punished for that crime. So the meaning of vengeance when it comes to Allah's actions means justice. We have to Im implement justice. This criminal must be met with justice. And when we implement justice and take this criminal and throw him into prison, this is an act of vengeance. It's called social vengeance. It's not personal. It's not that we have a personal hatred with this person. In fact, the judge or the police... They don't even know this criminal. They have nothing personal against him. But justice must be served. And this is how we come to understand the revenge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only seeks revenge when he established the clear signs and the proofs. And those evil ones knowingly, deliberately, stubbornly reject the signs of Allah. For example, the Holy Quran tells us about the people of Musa alayhi salam. Allah sent them all those clear signs. In one verse Allah says, nine signs Musa was equipped with and he took to the people of the Fir'aun. But they rejected all those signs knowingly. They were certain that Musa was truthful, yet they rejected all those signs. What happens next? Allah says, we took our revenge from them, from the people of the Pharaoh. How did Allah seek revenge? فَأَغْرَقْنَاهُمْ فِي الْيَمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused them to drown in the waters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala established justice, He punished them. And this is divine revenge. This is divine vengeance. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will seek the vengeance for the death of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Now the important question here is, how will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seek the vengeance? We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, based on His wisdom, He simply doesn't, you know, seek vengeance directly. Usually He doesn't. Allah can if He wants to. But Allah usually uses means. Allah can say be and it is. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala usually uses means in this life in order to seek vengeance. How will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala avenge the death of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam? One narration tells us that on the day of Ashura, when Imam al Hussein alayhi salam was killed in that brutal way, the angels of the skies could not restrain themselves. They broke into this severe mourning and weeping upon seeing what happened to the beloved of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And the angels could not help it. They said, oh Allah, how can you let the killers of Hussein get away with such a huge crime? How can you allow that? When will you seek revenge from them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to them. Allah created an image from them. He removed the curtain from their eyes. And they saw this image. Allah says to the angels, look, what do you see? They saw nine imams from the progeny of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And one of them was Qa'im, standing. Qa'im in Arabic means standing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the angels, you see that Qa'im one, the one who's standing, the last of them, the twelfth, or the ninth from the progeny of Imam al Hussein, they said, yes, we see him. Allah says, I shall seek revenge from the killers of Hussein using this qaim. With the qaim, I will seek the vengeance. And I will avenge the death of Al Imam al Hussein. Therefore, Al Imam al Mahdi, 
Allah is the one who will seek the vengeance from the killers of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Now, Imam al Mahdi has two rights in seeking the vengeance. Number one, he's the heir of Imam al Hussein. According to Islamic law, the heirs have the authority to seek vengeance. Imam al Hussein is the grandfather of Imam al Mahdi. Therefore, according to this verse in the Holy Quran, woman put to the Muslim, Fadd Jalna al Wali Sultana. Imam al Mahdi has the right, he has the personal right to seek the revenge. 
arms that were amputated from Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam for which of for which of those or do we seek revenge for what happened for Zainab alayhi salam being harassed by the enemies being paraded from one city to another city or for those orphans who were separated from fa- from their fathers on such a night, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam had to leave one of his orphans back in the city of Medina. On such a night, we remember that scene in which Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, when he wanted to depart the city of Medina and head towards Karbala, he called for his brother Abu al Fadl al Abbas. Aina qamar Bani Hashim? Where's the moon of Bani Hashim? Oh, Abbas! Have the horses ready, we have to move on, we have to go to Mecca and from Mecca to Karbala. The women and the children who stayed behind, they came to farewell Al-Imam Al-Hussein, Al-Wida, Al-Wida, Al-Firaq, Al-Firaq. One of those girls, one of those orphans who stayed behind was Fatima. One of the daughters of Imam al Hussein, Fatima al Alila, she was ill, she was sick. Imam al Hussein told Um Salama, I want you to take care of her. We can't take her with us. The journey is too long and she's too ill to join us. Fatima al Alila, she sees her father Hussein along with her uncle Abd Fadl al Abbas. She sees her brother Abdullah al Radi, all of them leaving her. She crawls towards her father Hussein and she tells him, Oh, my father, where are you going? Why are you leaving me behind? He told her, There is a treacherous journey ahead of us, a long journey, and you're sick. You cannot join us. You're too weak to be with us. Stay with Um Salama. Then if we settle on the land of Karbala, if we get there successfully and nothing happens to us, then I may send Abbas to come and pick you up. She tells him, oh Father Hussein, then at least keep Abdullah al Keep him with me so at least I have someone to seek consolation in. Someone to remind me of you. Don't leave me all alone over here without any of my siblings. The Imam told her, Oh Fatima, he's too young, he's too young, he breastfeeds, how can I separate between him and his mother? They fare well, Fatima al-Alila, and they go on their way to Karbala on the second day of Muharram. The caravan of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam reaches the land of Karbala. They reach an area. Al Imam al Hussein realizes that the horse is no longer moving. The Imam would tell the horse, Move, let's go on towards Kufa, but the horse refused. It stayed in that land. Imam al Hussein realized that something is not right over here. Zainab alayhi salam was standing close to Imam al Hussein. She tells him, My dear brother, I feel something heavy in my chest, something very heavy in my heart. What's happening? I feel this sadness, this sorrow, this depression in this land. What is the name of this land? Al Imam Al Hussein asked his companions, he gathered them, he told them, My dear companions, what is the name of this land? One of the companions came forward, he says, Oh Aba Abdullah, one name for this land is Al Ghadriya. The Imam says, Is there another name? He was looking for that name which he heard from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Because the Imam would constantly hear this name. Um Salama, she narrates one day when Hassan and Hussein were little children, the Prophet went into his room and he told Um Salama, I want you to make sure no one disturbs me. The Prophet wanted to worship, wanted to rest. Make sure no one comes into my room to disturb me. Um Salama says, I saw Hussein running towards the room of his grandfather. I held Hussein, I told him, No, your grandfather is resting. And then suddenly he ran out of my hands and he went inside the room of Rasulullah. She says, I went close to the room of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. 
You know what Um Salama says? She says, I saw Hussein sitting on the stomach of the Prophet. The Prophet was laying down, and Al Hussein was sitting on the chest on the stomach of the Holy Prophet. And I heard the Prophet wailing and weeping. I went inside. I told him, Ya Rasulullah, why are you wailing and weeping? Sunni historians and scholars have narrated this event, brothers and sisters. Um Salama says, Ya Rasulullah, why are you crying? What what happened? Don't you love Hussein? He told her, Oh, um, Salama, just now Jibrail descended upon me. And he told me, Ya Muhammad, do you love your grandson Hussein? I said, Yes, I love him so much. Then he told me, Oh, Muhammad, know that your grandson Hussein will be massacred on the plains of Karbala. Do you want to see the soil of Karbala, Ya Rasulullah? Musnad Ahmad, he narrates this. He said, yes, I want to see it. Jibra'il, he gets a handful of the soil of Karbala. And he shows it to the Prophet. The Prophet takes the soil, he puts it in a small container. And he gives it to Um Salama. He tells her, oh Um Salama, whenever you see this turning into red, <coughs> whenever it becomes you know, like blood red, realize that my grandson has been killed. And indeed on the day of Ashura, Um Salama, when she looked at this small jar container, she saw the blood turning into red. And she saw the dust turning into red. She realized that Imam Al Hussein had been killed. So Imam Al Hussein was looking for this word which he had heard from the Prophet, the word of Karbala. Then one of the companions, he came and he stood up and he says, Oh Aba Abdullah, the name of this land is Karbala. Al Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam, he broke into tears. He said, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al karbi wal bala. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you because the meaning of the word Karbala, it's a combination of two words, of trials and tragedies and tribulations. Oh Allah, protect us from the tragedy and the tribulations then he told his men he told the companions oh my companions here we shall settle let's camp out here my dear companions this is where we shall settle my dear companions it is in this land that our men shall be massacred and killed it is in this land that the children shall be orphaned and it is this land which the women shall be taken as prisoners of war. Zainab could not take it. She broke into tears and Imam Hussein came down from his horse and he told her, Oh Zainab, you have to be patient. And then he showed her, he told her, Zainab, do you see that low-lying area? <laughs> this is the place that I shall be massacred. Then he takes her to the river of Furat to believers and he tells her oh Zainab in this area your brother Abel Fadl al Abbas he shall be struck with an iron rod his hands will be amputated and this is the area that he shall be killed inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon wa sayya'lamu alladhina zalamu ala muhammadin ayyamun qalabiyan qalibun wal aqibatu lil muttaqin brothers and sisters raise your hands in dua with broken hearts and tears allah has promised that he will forgive us our sins everyone together recite this holy verse five times together so allah answers our prayers anyone who's in distress anyone who's sick that you know this is the moment of dua brothers and sisters raise your hand in dua everyone together bismillahir rahmanir rahim amman yujibul mudhtar idha da'a
أما أن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء يا الله 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 Oh Allah, hasten the reappearance of our master, Al-Imam Al-Mahdi. Oh Allah, make us amongst his sincere followers and dedicated servants. Oh Allah, grant us the ziyar of Al-Imam al Hussein. Oh Allah, grant us the shafa'ah of Al-Imam al Hussein. Wa ila arwah al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat nudi thawab surat al-Fatiha. مسبوقة بالصلاة على محمد وآل محمد